Okay, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to continue with compound interest. So you will remember in the previous lecture, we derived the formula for compound interest. So now we have two important formulas. We have the formula for simple interest and the formula for compound interest. So remember, for simple interest, we have the future value is the present value, 1 plus the interest rate times n. And this is for simple interest. And then for compound interest, we have the future value is the present value, 1 plus the interest rate to the power n, where n is the number of compounding periods, and this is then for compound interest. Okay, so we are going to look at some examples on um, compound interest in this lecture. And similar to simple interest, uh, we are given, or in the formula, we have four quantities. We have the future value, the present value, the interest rate, and the number of compounding periods. Um, and then in a question, you will be given three of these four quantities, and you have to find the fourth one. So it's similar to the examples that we did for simple interest. But before we look at these examples, I just again want to illustrate the difference, um, the effect of the difference between simple interest and compound interest. And this example or this illustration is very similar to what we did by hand in the previous lecture, except now we can do it for more time periods in Excel so you can see the effect more clearly. Okay, so what I have here, I've got a present value of a thousand rands and an interest rate of 15% per annum. And first of all, I'm going to um, calculate the future value and the interest uh, for if we work with simple interest. So I start out with this 1000 rands. Then at the end of the first year, I want to find my future value. So my future value will just be the previous amount and then I add the interest and the interest is my thousand rands that I started out with and I multiplied with my interest rate. Now I'm going to put the dollar signs before the row and the column indicators to keep them fixed. Okay so that will remain um, G1 and G2 as we, um, if we um, draw the formula down to, the, to all the other cells. Okay, so my future value at the end of the first year is then 1150 and my interest will then be the difference between these two. Okay, so I have an interest of 150 rands. And now I can do the same and we have here um, 24 time periods. Okay, and I can do the same with the interest. And you can see that the interest remains 150 rands throughout. Now I'm going to do the same or the similar thing, but I'm going to work with compound um, interest. So my future value is. Um, the present value, or the previous value, plus, and then we take that previous va um, value and we multiply it with our interest rate. And now, again, my interest rate will remain the same, but my um, future value will keep on changing. So. Um, and then my interest is just, again, the difference between these two. Now, I repeat that formula, and you can see now my future value keeps on growing because every time I will calculate the interest on the um, future value uh, in the previous time period. And we do the same thing for the interest. Can also see that my interest is growing. So now if we do a plot of this, and I'm first going to make a plot of simple interest and compound interest. 
So that's a plot of the future values actually. So here I've got the future values for simple interest and for compound interest. So now you can see my simple interest grows, the future value um, grows over time, but at a slow rate, the future value um, of my compound, when I work with compound interest, the future value grows at an exponential rate. Okay, uh, in the beginning, there's not much difference between these two lines, and then suddenly the compound interest, um, the future value for that just um, take off at, at the high speed. And we can do the same thing if we plot, if we now take the interest for simple interest and the interest for compound interest, and we plot those, and you can see the interest for simple interest re just remains the same. So if I do that, a graph of the interests. The, the um, simple interest remains fixed at 150 rands, but the interest, if we work with compound interest, um, follows an exponential curve. Okay, this so this is just again to illustrate the point that um, compound interest makes a big difference to simple interest. Okay, so next we would like to look at some of the examples on simple interest. Um, example 7 is a repetition of example 1 that we did for simple interest, except that now we are not working with simple interest, but we are working with compound interest. A person requires a loan of a thousand rands and is able to repay the loan after two years. Assuming a bank is willing to lend the person the thousand rands, determine how much should be repaid, assuming that the interest rate is 12% per annum, compounded annually. So the difference here is that we are now working with compounded annually and no longer simple interest. So what do we have here? We've got the present value, which is a thousand rands. We have the time periods or the number of compounding periods, and that is two. Um, and we've got the interest rate. So the interest rate is 12% per annum compounded annually. And now we would like to know what is the future value. So we have the present value is a thousand rands. We have the interest rate is 0 0.12 per annum compounded annually. So this is important that you indicate that it's per annum and we are working with compounding interest and it's compounded annually. And then we also have our n is equal to two, two years. Remember that the units that we use for n and for the interest rate must be the same. So this is 12% per annum and we have n equal to 2. It's per annum compounded annually, and my n is equal to 2 years. So we would like to know what is the future value. Now, because we are working with compounding interest, we know that the formula is future value is present value 1 plus the interest rate to the power n. Our present value is 1,000 rands. 1 plus 0 0.12 to the power 2. And therefore, our future value is equal to 1,254 rands and 40 cents. And now you can go and compare that with the answer in example 1. Example 1 was the same except that we worked with simple interest. And in example 1, our answer was 1,240 rands. And that is what you would expect because we are now working with compounding interest. The, the interest component will be more and therefore our future value will also be higher. Okay, then example 8. Example 8 is, um, is similar to example 4 that we did for um, simple interest. Determine the interest an investor earns if the future value of his investment is 2,000 rands. The interest rate is 16% per annum compounded annually and the investment period is five years. Okay, so again, um, we start out with what we have. 
Um, so we have the future value is equal to 2000. The interest rate is equal to 16% per annum compounded annually. The investment period LN is equal to 5. And we would like to know um, what is the interest. Okay. Now, if you go back to example 4, uh, where we did the same example except for simple interest, for example 4, we had an answer, the interest equal to 888 rands and 89 cents. So what do you expect your answer to be in this case? So it's always important to have um, an expectation of what your answer is going to be. So you have to have an intuition of what the um, answer is going to be. Is it going to be close to this answer? Is it going to be more? Or is it going to be less than this 888 rands? So um, you can ask yourself, do I expect the answer to differ a lot from this um, answer from example 4? And do I expect it to be more or do I expect it to be less than this answer? Now, because we are working in example 8 with compound interest, one would expect that the interest will be more. So let's do this example and then we evaluate our answer. Okay, again, we start out um, with our simple formula. We have the future value is the present value 1 plus the interest rate to the power n. We have the future value, we have the interest rate, we have n. Um, and we want to know what is the value of i, the interest. Now remember that the interest is just the difference between the future value and the present value. So the interest is the difference between the future value and the present value. So if we can calculate the present value, then we will be able to find the interest. Okay, so now we can do our substitutions. Um, we would like to find the present value. So we can rewrite this formula so that we have the present value on the left and um, the rest on the right. So the present value will just be the future value divided by 1 plus i to the n. Or we can also write it as the future value 1 plus i to the power minus n. Okay, so these two uh, ways of writing it, uh, these two ways are equivalent. So now I can substitute my information. I know that my future value is 2,000 rands. My interest rate is 16% per annum, compounded annually, and um, my n is 5 years, so it's to the minus 5 there. And then I get a present value Okay, and from this I can get my interest. My interest is the future value, 2,000 rands minus this. Okay, so my interest is now 1,047 rands and 77 cents. And again, if we compare that to the interest for simple interest, then the interest is, as we expected, the interest is more in this case. Okay, in example 9, um, example 9 is again a repetition of um, example 4 that we did for simple interest. Sorry, not example 4. It's a repetition of example 5. What is the rate of interest per annum for an investment of 5,000 rands when six months later it is valued at 6,000 rands? Okay, now this note, if the compounding period is not given, you can assume that the compounding is annually. Okay, so what do we have here? We have um, the present value 
which is 5,000 rands. We have the future value, which is 6,000 rands. And the compounding period here is annually. Um, my N, my number of compounding periods, uh, it's given here as six months. Okay, so we have to convert it to years because our uh, compounding period is annually. So we take the six months, we divide it by 12 to get 0 0.5 for my N. And I would like to know what is the interest rate. Okay, so again, we start out with our basic formula. So our basic formula for compound interest. And now I would like to know what is the value of I. So I would like to get I on the left and the rest on the right. So let's just do it step by step. So first of all, I'm going to divide by the present value on the left and on the right. Okay, so now that will cancel out. Um, and then I would like to get um, rid of that n to the power n. So if I take this to the power 1 over n, then this n and this n will cancel out to give me 1 plus i to the power 1. So what I do on the right, I also have to do on the left. Okay, so let me just write it out again so that it's not confusing. That is then equal to 1 plus i. And I would like to get i, the interest rate, on its own. So what I do is I subtract the 1 on the right, and then I also have to subtract the 1 on the left. So I end off with the interest rate is equal to future value over present value to the power 1 over n minus 1. Now I can do my substitutions. My future value is um, 6,000 rands divided by 5,000 rands to the power 1 over n, and my n is now 0.5, 6 months, and I subtract 1, and I get an answer of 0 0.44. Remember, this is only part of the answer. My interest rate is 0.44, then we have to add per annum, and it is compounded annually. Or you can write it out as 44% per annum compounded annually.